They sailed from Troy to Albion Those Trojan dogs of war Led by Brutus and Coranius They came to Britain's shore With shouts heard up in heaven When they beheld the land They sailed on up the river to where toughness now does stand So it was in the first published history of Plymouth, worth produced this in 1870, the opening few pages were about Gog Magog and Coronaeus. And the backstory there had been fake news in the 12th century. Geoffrey of Monmouth, the least reliable of our chroniclers, he called him, produced this story to give us uh, a narrative for how we got the kings and queens of this country. So the story he came up with, and people believed it for hundreds of years, was that Brutus came across from the Mediterranean with an army of Trojans. They landed at Totnes, and the Brutus Stone is there to this day, allegedly, and he came further west to Plymouth Hoe, where they encountered an army of Wessex giants, and an almighty battle took place, and the denouement of the battle, the climax, was when Gog Magog, the biggest of the giants, took to battle with Corineus, who was the leading Trojan warrior, and he uprooted, Gog Magog uprooted a tree as if it was just nothing, and went to hit Corineus. But Corineus, uh, he, was, he was wily. And after being grabbed by Gog Magog uh, and had three of his ribs crushed, what happened then is he got a bit cross. And even though he was smaller than the giant, he picked him up and hurled him over the cliff edge at Lame, which means giant's leap, evidently threw him over there, dashed him onto the rocks, blood everywhere, and battle over. And as a reward, Brutus gave Corineus the tip of Wessex, which he renamed Cornwall after Corineus. And Brutus himself went on to take the rest of Albion, which he renamed Britain in honor of Brutus. And everybody that lived here became Britons. Fake news, indeed, but people believed it for hundreds of years. And so, in the 15th century, when Plymouth eventually got independence from Plimpton up the river, and Sutton Ralph and Sutton Valatort and Sutton Prior were incorporated as one, then Plymouth thought, how can we celebrate this? And they thought, I know, we'll use the story of the giants on the hoe. And, and they created figures in the grass here, and we don't know where exactly, but we do know that they were here until the citadel was built, because there's several references to them. And Michael Drayton, in his epic poem, Polly Albion, that was published in 1612, he spent the first 20 lines of his epic poem writing about the battle of the giants on Plymouth Hoe. And so, from the town records, we know that they were cleaned out from time to time, but there is no pictorial reference for them. So, a few years ago, Charles Newington, who was responsible for the white horse at Folkestone, and that took years to get past the local authorities, he decided or thought it might be nice for Plymouth to rediscover their lost giants. And so he appealed to various people, Derek Tate, and then Derek passed it on to me. And as a director of the Waterfront Partnership, I picked up the gauntlet and the Waterfront Partnership, as of last week, have at last created these two figures. Charles Newington's created them, Templates were produced up in Kent. There was a trial run there. There was a trial run at Home Park just before the pitch was uplifted a few weeks ago. But last week, the full thing was done with the help of 2-9 Commando and the Plymouth Barbican Trust and various other sponsors. Plymouth Argyle were massively involved as well. And you get what you see here now, the rebirth of the giants on Plymouth Hoe. We've been working really closely with the Barbican Trust and Plymouth City Council to bring it back to the hoe. And as you can see, it looks absolutely amazing. We've even got people up there sitting there today while we have Cell GP on in the background. So it's been, it's been a really, really positive impact over the summer for, for Plymouth. Uh, in 2003, I created the, the giant white horse of Folkestone, which sits above the Channel Tunnel entrance. and. From then onwards, I had a particular interest in Chalk Hill figures, and I've been very, very honoured to be able to create this project for Plymouth. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to replace and put them back. It is my reimagining, because no one knows what they ever look like. Um, but here they are again. 
I'm seeing it for the first time after a heavy day yesterday with the team, with Plymouth Argyle and with the 29 Commando, all helping out, and Winscott, who's the custodian of the Citadel. Um, a fantastic team. We all came together, an exhausting day, but we finally got it done. And here they are, and in a temporary form, and it has just been done with chalk lining. We hope it'll last through to the summer, and uh, we will see what happens from there. I just hope the people of Plymouth will like it and embrace it and enjoy having it. And it's been a pleasure and a privilege to have done it. Thus ends the tale of God may God and Coranius the brave. One on the land triumphant stands, the other neath the wave.